0212s today, and some good old-fashioned lineups to give us some good old-fashioned 5v5 teamfight Dota. Team Lucid off everyone. and running with their little dinosaur courier. And down the bottom we have Power Falcons uh, getting prepped up. They're already out of the base. They throw the panda down, and uh, he's probably one of my favorite couriers. And off they go. So without further ado, let's introduce the teams. On the top for the Dire, headed out is Octavian playing the Lion for Team Lucid, D2 playing the Slark mid, Snowman playing the offlane Clockwork, the A3P playing the Gyrocopter carry, and Puff playing the support Nyx Assassin. Down on the Radiant side for Power Falcons, we're going to have Eva playing the Venomancer, Atreides playing the Marana, and Russian playing the <laughs> Bane. Looks like they are going to set up for a possible gank. Marana does, hasn't picked yet, but she will grab that arrow, and they do have that gale uh, to potentially move on that ward, should it choose to spawn there. Mid, we're going to have Pro at Dying playing the Dragon Knight, and we're going to have Koopa Troopa playing the Timbasaw. The lineup's not unexpected. Uh, pretty much what we thought would happen from the get-go. So let's see what we get here. Let's see what's being shared. Lots of announcers, fun, fun HUD skins. Cool dire tide. Nah, I don't love cruel dire tide. I'm gonna stick to my golden treasures. All right, so there is the rune. Atreides, nobody's going for it. They're just gonna pick it up uh, for that yeah, trilane up on the top. No aggressive try. Uh, no, I'm sorry. There will be an aggressive try coming out of Power Falcons here. So that bane and that venomous gale and that arrow, they're gonna try to use to get some good solid ganks. So there are no wards up in the opponent's jungle at this point. Nobody is blocking creep camps. This is exactly opposite of the start of the last game. So I'll open up our last hit tonight chart, and what you want to do is keep an eye on the really important matchup here of Dragon Knight and Slark. They're going to be battling for those last hits. I don't, I don't feel good about Slark's chances here, but hey, I've been wrong before. Into the jungle goes Power Falcon, so we're going to be going for those ganks. So we're going to keep an eye on the action up there. And then down the bottom, that Clockwork Timber Saw is also going to be a very important matchup in the off lane. Those two are very important in the mid game, and they are going to be two, literally probably two, if you take we were out of the equation, the best off lanes in the game. So this one, I honest to God believe Clockwork versus Timbersaw is going to come down to a player uh, with the better reactions and some of the faster movement. Ooh, a nice pounce by Slark. Dragon Knight going head to head. Oh, he misses. He misses. Could have had the kill. Would have had the kill. Should have had the kill. That's all right, pro at dying. But once again, as an example of why that Dragon Knight is just such a strong matchup against that Slark. At least early on. If Slark can get the snowball, obviously he does take some advantage. Uh, but Dragon Knight's just got so much in his arsenal. Timbersaw and Clockwork very, very close. Lots of pings up here in the top. It looks like both of these teams are posturing. I don't know if Lucid was expecting the aggressive try lane. Thank you, Monty. I appreciate it. All right, a little a little, a little creep farming, but that observer ward is here. It's going to stop that creep spawn, keep an eye on it. Looks like down in the bottom mid, we've got a little bit of a mix-up. Ooh, Dragon Knight and Slark. Sl Dragon Knight's in a little bit of trouble. Can Slark land a pounce? No, he can't. He decides to go back for some last hits. Back up on top. Bane's got that nightmare up. Venomancer in a bit of trouble. Here comes that flat cannon. Will he get away? Oh, Venomancer does. does. A lot of harassment still going out. Oh, no. There is the first blood. So down goes Octavian from Lucid. You saw it here first, that lion just gets caught. Uh, but they may change it around. Venomancer in a bit of trouble. Lovely pounce. Nice rotation by the Slark so that they're able to get both. They get the Venomancer and the Bane. They go two for one, though the first blood did go the way of uh, PF. Atromedes in some serious trouble, and here he comes. Oh! And Slark forced to jump away. Great kiting. Those jukes. So uh, two for one, first blood sort of evens it out. So I'm going to call that a fairly even trade at this point because you get all that extra gold bonus for the first bounty. <laughs> Taking a quick peek at those last hit sharks. Looks like Clockwork is beating Timbersaw pretty handily. Oh, here we go. Pounce lands on the Dragonite, but the Dragonite is much more health than the Slark. Uh, he does let him get away. 
Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Nyx Assassin might be in some trouble. Nightmare up on the Gyrocopter. There is the Venomous Gale. Gyrocopter getting very, very low. Nice stun by the Nyx. In comes Lion to help, but it's not going to be enough. Gyrocopter does go down. And Marana in a bit of trouble. She needs to get out of dodge. All right, good. The matchup here, definitely going the way of Dragonite in that mid. Uh, he does have more last hits. Slark kind of being boxed out a little bit. Down the bottom, Timbersaw and Clockwork going head-to-head. -head. Clockwork getting the best of Timbersaw significantly, 15-5. to 5. So uh, Clockwork is going to start really messing with that Timbersaw soon. There's the cog. As we say it, so it happens. But it's not going to be a ton of damage going out. Uh, that refractive shield is just such a pain. Up here comes a long arrow. The Nightmare was trying to set it up, but doesn't really matter. The event of skill goes off. Lion's in some deep trouble. There's the double stun from that Nyx and that Lion, but Lion's going to go down. A nice leap by Murata. We lose the Venomancer. Here comes that Flat Cannon. Bane in some trouble here, and it looks like they may be able to get away. Those creeps do get involved. Slark very, very alone. He needs to be very careful there when Dragon Knight comes back. A lot of harassment from that Clockwork. He really wants to mess with that Timber Saw. Nice pounce. He just picked up his boots from the courier, so Clark's going to be a lot more confident now that he has those boots. A little more of an escape ability. Up on top, we're 3-3. Three to three. Uh, This aggressive trialing is getting everything it wants. Uh, maybe a little less in the way of survive, the surviving, uh, but there's a lot of action up on the top lane. So, less tower push, more action. Old school team fight. Uh, nice pounce by the Slark, really putting it to the Dragonite. Dragonite doesn't have any mana, so he's going to have to back off of this fight. Ooh, Bane caught by the Lion. He is hexed, uh, but I don't know if they're going to have enough damage to get that Bane down. Bane needs to Nightmare something ASAP. Oh, he goes for the Nyx Nightmare, and it's going to be enough to get him out of there, so well done. Well done. All right, so uh, Dragon Knight definitely beating the Slaughter. Slaughter wants, seems to want more want to fight the Dragon Knight than get the last hits, whereas Dragon Knight's pretty content to let the Slaughter do what he wants and just keep hitting those creeps. Net worth is uh, in the favor of Marana right now, but the uh, Slark, the Clockwork, and the Gyrocopter are right behind. So right now, uh, Lucid in a very good position. We got ports coming in on top. Oh, they are making some move. Marana in some deep trouble. She goes down to that cannon. Uh, I don't even. I'm not sure why she was pounced in so far. Another rotation coming up. Here is Lion. Lion's going to try to come in. He changes his mind. and goes back Missing into the jungle. Middle. Awkward and Timber Sauce still sort of hitting each other, but neither really able to do enough damage to this other who is very very tanky. Both have great survivability. Nightmare up. Uh, I assume the Marana Arrow follows. Gyrocopter in some trouble, and Gyrocopter will just melt down. Caught while his supports were gone. So they do get that revenge for the Marana kill just a little while ago. Keeping it very, very even. Gold graph less than 750 going Lucid's way. XP very, very close to even as well. Uh-oh. Whoa. We see rotation down from the Slark, so we could see the first kill on this Timber Saw, potentially, if Slark wants to come in and mix it up. Though it's dangerous because Dragon Knight's getting free farm in that mid, and that's not something you want to give a Dragon Knight. So here he comes. He's going to try to get in a good position to land a Pounce. If he can land that Pounce and then uh, Clockwork can follow the end of the Pounce with a Cog, that's going to be the end of a Timber Saw. He really wants to get that right position. Oh, he misses the Cogs. Does land the Pounce, though, and is able to grab and get out. So uh, that's why you got to have that Cog ready to go. Timber Saw putting out a lot of damage, but getting very, very low. Is he going to chase it? Is he going to hide? Who's going to go down? Timber Saw drops, but will the Clockwork? No. Clockwork passes the Tower Aggro to Slark uh, and saves himself. So great job getting that Timber saw gank. Radiant's bottom towers seem better. Miss Gale the gyro again. A lot of good harassment here. There's the nightmare. Oh, a great stun by the Nyx. Locks him down, and it's going to be a turnabout. Looks like Bane is going to drop. Bane gets hexed, and Bane gets killed. So a beautiful turn just before gyrocopter dropped. Literally, had Nyx not made that move to get a double hero stun, uh, he would have lost his gyrocopter. So props on the impale. Dyer's mid tower won't last much longer. Uh, uh. Lots of action going on right now. 
That top lane is just killing it. Slark looks like he... Uh-oh. Whoa-oh. That's a double damage rune for, rune for the Slark. That will he go for the Dragon Knight, or will he go for the push? The He's going to rotate around. Looks like they're calling for it. Down. Up on top. Slark is not going to listen. Slark says no and goes back to the mid. Slark with that double damage, uh, if he can use it, it is in his rune, so he doesn't have to use it, or in his bottle, so he doesn't have to use it right away. Uh, he will want to wait till he gets a really good pounce to kind of put that into action, or a good position for a pounce. Looks like he's setting himself up for it. There it is. Does he pop the double damage? He does not. He actually ends up having to back out. Dangerous pounce for him that close to the tower. Activates the double damage rune. He really needed the bottle is really why he activated it. Uh, probably could have waited until he got a little closer if he's headed to top to activate it. Keep that same regeneration, but let that double damage last a bit longer once you're closing in on the fight. Guess what's happening to Dyer's bottom tower. Oh, no. oh. Alright, so this is it. We've got the Venomous Gale in place. They're falling back. Good rotation through the river. That Slark really wants to get a kill, and I think they figured it out. So uh, they are able to fall back. That Venom Ward right there gave vision of that Slark with the double damage rune coming in. Slark just walked right by it, didn't even try to kill it. Uh, I think a big mistake. Slark will go take it out now. He did figure it out. He finally found it, pinged it, and said, ah. Hello calling for a long rotation down to the bottom lane. Dragon Knight's just hitting that tower. Uh, takes it out, actually, I'm sorry. Took out that mid tower. It's just getting some free farm, which you can't give a Dragon Knight. So uh, Nyx is going to actually rotate down, probably harass that Dragon Knight a little bit. Slark really wants to get a kill. He jumps on the Marana. A lovely pounce. Uh, in comes the Bane. Here comes some call downs. Is Marana going to go? Marana drops. Bane Hex. Call down. Flat cannon. They kill two. They kill three. Down goes that entire top lane. And the aggressive tri-lane is paid out in dividends. They lose, and the tower should push. Nope, Lucid chooses not to push the tower. The top tower. I got to question that decision. I know that they're low on health, uh, and I know that they don't have that. They really got to get that creep wave up there. It's really kind of a key to the modern Dota meta that a wipe or a kill results in a tower. Clockwork in some trouble here. He does get some great defensive clogs up. Dragonite gets a stun on him. Timbersaw just keeps hitting the cogs. There we go, get a good jump, get a good jump! Oh, great Venomous Scale. Here comes, are they going to get him? And they do get him, so he tries to TP out, Clockwork is unable to, and now he dies and wastes 150 gold on that TP scroll that didn't pan out. Nice try to escape, also good job of knowing that there were no stuns left on the side of Power Falcons. So Power Falcons, uh, looks like they're going to push that bottom lane. Right now they are winning the Tower War, though uh, Nyx and Slark are hoping to change that it looks like, so this tower is completely full. Also the keeping in mind, we got a little rat dota going on here. Uh, Power Falcons hitting the top and bottom at the same time. They're going to force out some TPs from the Maybe Lucid team to kind of come out and get some defense. Dyer's top towers getting beat down. No TPs. They're going to just uh, let them burn as much as they can. Maybe and that is uh, the up. damage of the Venomancer. He's able to just keep putting that damage on there. Meanwhile, the top tower is down to about a quarter health. Uh, bottom tower is about a quarter as well. And Power, Fa power Falcons just coasts away. They do a lot of damage and fall back to safety. And there's Dragon Knight right back to that free farm. So right now, Lucid's definitely got the advantage on the kills. Uh, gold is Lucid's advantage by only a thousand. Uh, XP is definitely going Lucid's way by about two. Oh, a nice jump by Pounce. He wants this Venomancer. He's probably going to get him. Rana pops her ulti, but is it enough? It is not. Uh, and a nice fast kill by the Slark. So that's what we're scared of with the Slark, is that snowball and gank ability. Venomancer never stood a chance. Looking at a bit of gear here, I know there's not going to be a ton since we're still in the early stages. Uh, we got some boots out, not too many. We do have that Ring of Aquila on the Gyro. Uh, he also has his Helm of the Iron Will and his Phase Boost, so Gyro's getting some decent farm here. Oh, Timbersaw is going on the Slark. Is he? There's no Nightmare able to get up on the Slark on the uh, Slark in time. Slark's going to be able to juke around. His ulti is up, so he does have the escapes that he needs to get out of here. Slark, such a frustrating, frustrating character to get the kill on. 
Oh, and he pounces on the Venomancer. No help around. What's he gonna do? He does get the ulti up. Sucks me, but to use his uh, his one his Q skill to get it off. Marana in trouble at the top. In the meantime, drops to three, and they end up with a two for none <laughs> from that Slark just being cheeky down there uh, and harassing the tri lane. So Lucid definitely taking a powerful position right now. XP just really bounced in their favor, uh, and gold as well. Power Falcon is really the only option they have is to try and take down some of these towers and push in, uh, keep Lucid sort of on their side of the map. A little more aggressive warding and some sentries would probably help them out as well. There goes the Slark again, pounces on the Bane, Bane nightmares himself and gets nuked, that finger hurts. So great job by Slark actually taking the nightmare off for just a second so that Lion can come in and get the finger. Down here in the mid, it looks like Clockwork's in some trouble. Dragonite is in the cogs with him. One more swing, two more swings. Oh, nope. And uh, Venom is able to slow him down with that with that ward slow. So a trade, but it's still 13 to 6 in favor of Lucid. Uh, Lucid very much in danger of running away with the game if Power Falcons can't put a stop on them ASAP. Graph going to 3,000. Last hits have just been Gyrocopter and uh, Clockworks game. So Lucid's really kind of dominated that last wit, last hit charts. And you're really to kind of play it. To, to, any suggestions for those of you who are joining the Dota 2 amateur or semi-professional team? Look at those numbers. Not only are they winning the last hit competition. But they're also winning the deny competition, and if you want to play on that competitive level, uh, the thing that I see most consistently from winning teams is the high last hit counts, but also that high deny count uh, really keeps the other team down uh, during the early inning phase, which has become so, so important with these games that are averaging anywhere from 18 to 26 minutes. It's a big change from the old games, which used to average in the house of 46 minutes. And Brian uses her ulti. Dragon Knight still gets the stun, goes for the Nyx. Nyx burns down. The call down is up. Down drops the Nyx. Down drops the Slark. A very, very low Dragon Knight. Dragon Knight goes down as well. Timbersaw jumps in. Rana's ulti still up. They are able to get the, the Nyx Assassin. They're able to get that Gyrocopter down. They want more. They want the Lion. They got the Clockwork. What a great job by Power Falcons. We said they needed to come up with a plan, and boy, did they. They get four for one and take a top tower. Kudos to you, Power Falcons, for not letting it get to you and planning a good counter push. Look at that gold graph. It just spins around and goes back in the back in the direction of Power Falcons. Huge, huge win for them on that fight. See the item buys they desperately needed, and uh, looks like a Shadow Blade incoming. Potentially getting very close for that Dragon Knight, uh, and obviously the wars that are going to be much needed for Eva that we were talking about earlier. There is a Yasha on Slark though, just as a heads up, uh, and a Helm of a Dominator on the Gyro. Oh, here comes, it looks like a gank plan, but nope, here comes a TP to help out. Dragon Knight might find himself in some trouble here if he doesn't get out. That Clockwork wants one of them. Looks like a ch they decide that Marana is going to be their target. Uh, Marana is going to make a run. Venomancer comes in to help. This is a four versus three, though, so they need to fall back to that tower. There's the pounce by Slark. They do get the Venomous scale up. Slark in trouble. Call down, get out of the call down. They're second, they get very, very low. Clockwork puts up his cock, she doesn't get anybody. Marana melts as she tries to TP out. Dragon Knight, very, very low. He is in trouble. They do get the Gyrocopter on the turn, however. Great job rotating by Timbersaw. Clockwork hunting the Dragon Knight, but he's not going to find Dragon Knight hiding just long enough, and down goes the Clockwork. Power Falcons twists another potential loss to get themselves a 3 to 1 exchange. So, epic, epic, epic Somebody job. And they're going to be a 4 to 1 exchange. Great job by Timbersaw. A wonderful chase. And Power Falcons is not only right back into this game, but they are now in firm control of the gold counter and dead even on XP. I don't play favorites, but I always like to see the team that gets uh, gets a little bit trounced on the first round, come back and have a great second round. And I was worried for a moment the Power Falcons was going to fall down, uh, but they stepped up and pushed it in, so they get a four for none and a tower. I believe that the word for that is Bangarang. 
Uh oh, Slark's in some trouble. Nice rotation by the Bane. He does pop his ulti and pounces out to get away. Bane's not in range Radiant to use his nightmare. Uh, long Bane. arrow, <laughs> and he jukes it. Very close. Very Almost got that kill on Slark, making it a five for none. Or for one, I'm sorry. Invisory on Slark, however, that is a very scary prospect. Incoming! Nice juke on the arrow. Uh oh, looks like the mid is where we're gonna get some action here. Both teams looking to get the advantage on the high ground. This is a very important fight with a dead even heat right now. Uh, gold is 4,000 in the advantage of Power Falcons. Their farm has been pretty good. Uh, now that they're able to get the kills that they got, uh, it's very, very close. Those tower advantages is definitely helping them. So this is a big fight. Uh, two evenly matched teams. We got the rotation around by Slark. He does have that Invisorin up. He would like to get someone to pick him off. He saw the smoke go off, so he did see that smoke. He knows that they're smoked, and he's going to have to warn the team. Now, he, they also know that he's found them. Their smoke has fallen off, so it means Slark is there. They throw a Sentry Ward down. Slark jumps. It <laughs> Close call for Slark. Incoming. A second longer, a second longer on that pounce, and he would have been a dead fish. Great work, great work by PF to get themselves back in this match. Uh, Lucid definitely all of a sudden finds themselves in sort of a back foot, and I don't, I, they're trying to figure out how that happened. I think and make a little bit of a change. The real test here is will, how Lucid will handle this and uh, kind of get themselves reset. Because they are now down Radiant all three Tier 1 towers, which was shape. fine when they were so far ahead in the kill counts. But those two team wipes really, really hurt them. Radiance top tower. Right, they're able to uh, get that Central Ward down and put some D wards on the uh, Radiant. Clark gets that second ward down. Venomaster's not interested. Timbersaw ready as well. They used it as a bait. They baited with their ward and burned down the Slark. Brilliant, brilliant knowing what Slark was going to do and waiting in the trees until he did it. Not too shabby there, Power Falcon. It's a very smart move. I don't think I've seen Observer Ward bait in a while. If ever. And just like that, it looks like Power Falcon is going to keep that push going. They do have the advantage. They've got the Venomancer. So they're going to keep pushing these towers. Force Team Lucid to come to them. Now, this is dangerous. Power Falcon probably should get out of here. Team Lucid is collapsing with four. Uh, and Power Falcon only has three. So they're going to have to fall back here. Uh oh, that's five Power Falcons. Team Lucid is porting in. So it looks like we may see a team fight. Regen rune in the bottle of the Dragon Knight, so not something you want to see. Not something you want to see if you're the Slark who's going to try to pounce on him. Vanny. He pops a good stun on you. Oh, Marana pops her ulti. They're going to rotate in. This is better than a smoke gank. Uh, they don't have any vision. That Nyx Assassin can be in some deep trouble. Nope, they rotate into the jungle. They know that Lion's there. They have vision, and they're going to go on him, and Lion doesn't stand a chance. Lion literally melts. By the sword. Die. So Slark is running around looking for ganks, but Power Rangers or Power uh, Falcons really figured out that this was happening and has just been running a five man and really kind of negating Radiant that Slark's ability to pick anybody off. Pretty sad right now. Look at the kill. Slark does have the most, but he's not as many as he needs to really snowball here. Net worth is going the way of the gyrocopter. However, Dragonite Marana and Timbersaw have Radiant taken over that top two, three, four position. Four. So this tower is in some dire straits. They're probably going to be able to get it down. <laughs> a nice creep arrow by Marana. And Power Falcons retreats with the tower in pocket and a lion kill to speak of. The Power Falcons uh, handily in charge now. They're, they got four, that 4,000 gold advantage. They do. Experience is still pretty close, though. So really what it comes down to is their tower push is giving them the gold that they want. Take a look at some items here. Uh oh, bloodstone on the timber saw. That's gonna hurt. Drums on the Marana. Uh, we've got the shadow blade up on the Dragon Knight as well as the urn on the Venomancer. Down the bottom, urn picked up by Nyx. Not a whole lot else has come out since the last time we took a look. Still that Yasha, uh, and nothing else really big. Looks like uh, Clockwork's getting close to his next item, but nothing just yet. 
Oh, looks like there is a mech on the Bane. So Bane has mech almost built in his storage, just waiting on the recipe. Uh, so that's going to be a big one. And it looks like Gyrocopter is almost done with his BKB. That's a Mithril Hammer and an Org Club. So he is very, very close to the BKB. Bane has finished the mech and is having it flown out to him right now. That BKB is going to really give Lucid an advantage going into some of these team fights here. There is no BKB up on the other side uh, for anyone. Nobody's even really cl close to a BKB over on the PF side. It doesn't look like they might be pursuing it. So that gyrocopter with that first BKB charge might give them the team fight kills, especially with that flat cannon. Uh, they need to turn this around and get back into their favor. There's a oh, Nick's assassin. Nick's assassin just got assassinated. No pun intended. Yes, pun intended. Uh, but he just melted him. Man, they're just moving as five. They are an inseparable unit. Uh, Slark can't pick anybody off, and it is just killing Lucid to try and figure out how to get them. The Lucid supports are falling off in levels. They need to really kind of keep up there. Uh, both are level 9 at this point, and the supports over on the PF side are definitely farther ahead in, the, in terms of leveling. GPM going the way of Gyrocopter, not really a surprise there. XP pretty close, and then obviously gold. Still about that 4,000 mark, so not a lot has changed. Uh-oh, we've got one split off Timbersaw that Slark wants to kill, misses the pounce. Timbersaw wants to make the most of it, but he can't. He uh, grabs the wrong tree. So Timbersaw hopefully will be uh, headed up top to help out his team. He does have that Bloodstone. That Bloodstone is very helpful in a team fight, but it looks like they may rat a little bit here, uh, send the Timbersaw to the bottom lane. So it is going to be a 5v4. Pounce by the Bane. Call down up. Bane is in some deep trouble. Bane is down. Venomancer is down. Dragon Knight is down. There's that BK we talked about from the Ven from the gyro gy gyrocopter. I'm sorry. A nice jump by Clockwork to lock up that Marana after she pounce, after she jumps, and a nice pounce by Slark to finish it off. So, uh, like I said, you got to have that whole team. You got to have everyone there for those team fights, or you end up with a four to nine exchange. So, just like that, the BKB for Gyrocopter pays off in dividends and they are right back in this game gold graph drops Radiance down to a thousand gold different xp 2000 in the favor of lucid so they are back baby what a match this has turned out to be some good old-fashioned team fight dota those of you watching on Dota TV, I'm glad we could bring you a great game on the 82L. Uh, for those of you watching on Twitch.tv, 5 Midas Gaming, thank you for joining us. If you like the cast, you like the game, hit that subscribe button. It helps us get recognition from Twitch so that we can do things like provide you with different options for quality of stream. So that if you're watching on a mobile or an iPad, you won't have freezes because you can watch on a lower quality stream. That said, tell your friends to come watch this game because it is a good one so far. If you've got friends, invite them to your party. Get them on Dota TV if you've got the ticket. Invite them to watch it with you. Uh, Lucid versus Power Falcons here. This game deserves an audience. So many swings. So much back and forth. I thought Lucid was going to run away with it. Power Falcons pulls back in. Lucid gets another great team wipe. Who's going to win? Honestly, I can't I can't even say at this point. Power Falcons wants that team fight, though. They're, they're four heavy, though, once again. They're, they got one person split off. Will it be a detriment? You, Team Lucid, however, has uh, started to feel a little more back in this game. You can always tell by the wards who feels like they've got some control. And uh, right now, Team Lucid's got the wards here and here all over the opponent's jungle, um, showing that they want to be aggressive. The wards, well, the only ward up from PF right now is that defensive Roche ward. The Dyer might want to mine the top tower. All right, so five push on the tower. Here comes the gathering up of Lucid. They've got some vision with that rocket. Dyer's top tower. How will they initiate? Here they come. They're coming in the back. They did smoke, so they're going to smoke and circle in behind. Brilliant. Brilliant, brilliant, brilliant. Here's going to be the BKB from the gyrocopter. In he goes. Puts up the call down. A great cog Camerata stuck in there. She pops her ulti. It's probably not going to be enough, though. Down goes the timber saw. Uh, but they did lose a tower, so they need to get at least one more kill to make that tower worth it. They're on that Dragon Knight. Dragon Knight's doing some serious damage to that 
Oh, what a finger. Down goes the Dragon Knight. Down with that Marana. Down goes the Clockwork. Or, I'm sorry, the Timber Saw. Clockwork moves in and gets the stun on Bane. And that is another 4 to 9 in exchange for a tower. So, <laughs> Dragon Knight really wanted that line. The line turned around and said, no. Hit him with the finger of death. And that was the end of that. Nope. That is now Lucid's game. They're back to a thousand gold benefit on the gold chart. Uh, Slark picks up a BKB, so that is bad news bears for the Power of Falcons right now. Seeing both of those BKBs out uh, is going to make their life very difficult. We got the Ags up on the Clockwork. Uh, looks like he may also be going for a BKB now as well. Radiant's mid tower is getting banged up. Three BKBs is going to make them very, very hard to kill. Oh, that was a uh, Marana, Marana arrow to get a creep. A little next level farming from Marana there. Nyx Assassin just scouting around a bit. He does have his Vendetta. With that Vendetta, he can pretty much kill anybody on his own. Uh, but he is obviously support, so he doesn't have the same gear that you would expect from a Nyx Assassin at this point in the game. Gyrocopter sitting pretty. He's got that uh, Ring of Aquila turned off, but that Helm of the Dominator and that BKB it just makes him so hard to bring down. So so hard. Oh my god. Uh, he's got the gem, so he can find the he can find the wards when he gets there. Yasha BKB bottle. That is going to be a sore slark. I assume Sanj will be his next pursuit, just to make him so survivable. Uh, but we will find out shortly. Marana not sitting on a whole lot of farm items. Timbersaw did pick up a Mystic Staff. Uh, it's going to take him a little while to get to where he's going with that. Uh, but a little extra stats for him. Probably would have presented some survivability. Uh-oh. Gyromancer... <laughs> no, sorry. Uh, Gyrocopter does have the Eagle Song, however. So we might see a Butterfly coming out from him. I don't... I'm not 100% sure there. Uh, it'll be interesting to see where he goes with it. But that Eagle Song by itself just makes him very, very painful. I saw a BKB on the Marana. So Marana does now have a BKB as well, uh, but that is really her only item to speak of. Dust coming out from Lucid. Lucid's going to rotate into the jungle. Hey, it looks like they want to go ahead and get themselves a good gank, maybe secure some sec get some security so they can double back and get themselves a Roche. Sark out in front with that speed, doing a little bit of scouting. Uh-oh. This looks like this is going to be it. Slark in position to try and get a pounce on the next person he sees. The whole team locked up behind the jungle, and here it comes. Three, two, one. There, oh no, the Hex on the Marana. She's got double damage, but it's not going to matter when you're Hex. She'll pop her BKB. Nope, she wouldn't even have a chance to. She's melted down. Brand new BKB still in the box as Lucid runs away, laughing to themselves all the way to the bank. Rock it on! Look at that gold chart, up and down, XP chart all over the place, uh, but Lucid now definitely taking the advantage, and there they go, they go for that Roche that we thought that they might, once they got that little advantage on the uh, dead Marana. So look at this, it, it, the, it, Power Falcons is so backed up at the moment that they are having to run a 2 protect 1 strategy just to farm the Ancients. That's how worried about this Slark movement they are. Nobody has a medallion, uh, so this is a very long Roche. But uh, no no, no pings yet, they did deward the area. Oh, it looks like Bane's figured it out with his with his drawing, but they're not going to do anything about it. Down goes the Roche. Gyrocopter picks it up. Uh, why not make Gyrocopter? I was right, he does grab his butterfly. Why not make Gyrocopter more survival? And they smoke again. Ouch. That's all I have to say about that. All right, so Dragon Knight did pick up a BKB. That's going to be good for Power Falcons. They needed that BKB on the Dragon Knight. Um, so we're going to see a lot of BKB fights, some more drawn-out matches here. And in we go. Lion gets the Hex up on Marana. They're going to try to move on her. She pops her BKB, though. She calls it in. She gets the arrow up. Here comes the call down, though. That call down's going to hurt. Down goes Venno. Down goes the Timber Saw. Clockwork drops as well, however. Slark getting very low. Slark goes down. That, dra that BKB on the Dragon Knight does give him that survivability, but I don't think he's going to have enough. He gets Hexed and he is going to go down. Marana trying to finish the Gyrocopter though, and will she? She does. 
but he has the Aegis, so get out of there, Marana. Buy back from the clockwork, down goes the Lion, so we see a 3 for a 3, and an Aegis pulled out. So right now that fight goes the way of Power Rangers, as long as they can avoid losing anybody else. Like that. Here comes the clockwork. Bane's locked in. Clockwork. Uh, Bane is in some serious trouble. Here comes the gyro. Down goes the Bane. So now the fight goes the way of Lucid on a four to three, uh, with an Aegis pull, and they will most likely be able to take this tower as well. Radiant mid towers getting. Uh oh. Up. And Timbersaw picks up a Shiva's guard. It looks like. So Shiva's guard Bloodstone. That Timbersaw is uh, become is definitely getting some good uh, good farm here. Uh, but will it be too little too late? Is the question. That call down has just been used with lethal efficiency uh, by the gyrocopter and honestly I think the Timbersaw, I like the Shivas, he probably might have been better off going with the BKB just because of the ruthlessness of those call downs and that finger from Lion, uh, it's, just, it's just been a lot for them to deal with. Uh oh. Slark is smells something funny. Uh oh, there we go. Dragonite gets the catch on him. There's the stun. Oh, just misses the arrow. He wants out of there, but the whole team is chasing a beautiful pounce, and away goes Slark. So that arrow hits. Slark dies, uh, but the arrow misses. So Slark just escapes by the skin of his tinny chinny chin chin. Clockwork with the big initiation, able to cog in, but out jumps uh, Venomancer with the four staff. Venomancer still in some deep trouble, but he does get away. Uh, very, very low Nyx. Nice, nice ulti by Marana. So it looks like, uh, oh, Razor, Timbersaw got very greedy, gets himself fingered. He wants to get that Clockwork, but he's very low on health. Lion's going to come in and try to finish the job, but it's finished off by the Dragonite in return. They get the Gyrocopter, they get the Nyx, they get the Lion. What else will they walk away with? They walk away with the Slark. They do lose a Timbersaw, but what's a fair exchange? And we go 4-1 to one in favor of Power uh, Falcons, and they are going to push as hard as they can. They have a very long time that those carries are down. Uh, and they're going to be able to possibly take this tower, maybe even the barracks here. What a turnaround. What a turnaround. That was exactly what Power Falcons needed at that moment. And oh my lord, are they coming aggressive. There is the glyph of fortification from Lucid. Desperately trying to slow him down. They know the Nyx is coming up. Slark buys back. They force the buyback from Slark. They're still going to get the tower. The tower goes down. Will they get some barracks? No, they probably are going to have to pull back here. Pull back, pull back. Uh, and they pull back just in time to escape the call down. So the call down is burnt. And uh, they're going to give chase, but Power Falcons is going to escape and laugh and laugh and laugh because they're able to pull themselves right back into this game. Ain't looking good for the Radiant's body. Uh, it was a great chance. They, they took back a lot of XP. They took back a ton of gold. Oh my gosh. Uh oh, Nyx Assassin trouble. The arrow does miss, but that Timber Saw is coming in. Lots of BKBs up. Down goes the Dragonite. That is very bad. It might be time to get some disengage here. Nice jump by Murata. Down goes the Gyro. Down goes the Nyx. Slark in some trouble. Clockwork using a defensive cog. Slark is held in the nightmare, so they're going to cancel that in a second and try to get that Slark down. They do. The Slark drops, so it is a three for nine. And Luce is going to turn. I'm sorry, Power, Power Falcon is going to turn right back around and head towards those barracks. Really great job. A, a great example of how a BKBs can really change the course of a fight for a team. Uh, obviously, yeah, PF having the brand new BKBs with the longer cooldowns, having able to utilize that up against Lucid who got theirs earlier on in the game. At two barracks at once. Clockwork is not going to be able to do much without dying, so he's going to have to wait for his team to spawn. And that is 40 seconds on the Gyro and 48 on the uh, Slark. This might cost them another tower. So they lose both their mid barracks. They lose a tower. They this is this is bad news for Lucid. All right, so now now P PF needs to really consider getting out of dodge here. Uh, the carries are starting to come up. Maybe they get a barracks before they go. I think they do. Lucid does can't do anything but really watch, and a, a great discipline by PF for going after those barracks before they turn on the on the on the heroes here. They're able to get that uh, Nyx down. Lion comes in. Lion's in trouble. Lion goes down. Oh my goodness! Uh, buyback from the lion, and it looks like PF is going to have to retreat again. But 
this this is a great example. Something you don't see in a lot of amateur tournaments uh, is the discipline of PF to stay on that barracks. There was a lot of temptation with the lion and the clockwork harassing them to go out and get one or two of those kills. Instead, they made sure that that barracks went down and that tower dropped as well. So now uh, we've got mega creeps charging into the base. It's a much better trade in the long run. Uh, so great discipline by Power Falcons. And uh, we definitely want to send a shout out to Monty3724 over on Twitch.tv for uh, subscribing to the Five Midas Gaming channel uh, and uh, supporting Toffees at underscore Dota2 as a caster. And for those of you watching on Twitch, uh, the 5 Minus Gaming is Toffee's channel. Uh, I tried to get a, a various versions of Toffee's on Twitch, and almost all of them were taken. So I just said, F it, I'm going to start my own gaming channel. So Power Falcons and Lucid, dead even, 29 and 30. Gold's back in the range of Power Falcons because of that early dives. They got about 3,000, which isn't that much at this point in the game. And the XP is almost dead even again. So that chart is incredibly all over the place. Uh, Item-wise, wow, Eva just bought a whole lot of stuff all at once. Uh, so a lot of items coming out here. We do have the Demon Edge on Marana. Up in that BKB, we do have that Shiva's Guard now. Uh, Sanj picked up by Dragonite, so he's got more survivability coming his way. This is going to get very sketchy very fast. Both teams are posturing up. They know that that Roche is coming up any minute. Uh, they need to keep an eye on it. They really need to keep an eye on who's going to get this. This Roche uh, in 42 seconds really could determine the match here. So what I would love to see personally is I would love to see Power Falcons uh, choose to move in on the Roche even a little bit early since since uh, Lucid hasn't had a chance to check yet if Roche is up. Move into the Roche pit and then just turn and wait there. See if and and kind of bait Lucid into coming to them. They have the bottleneck. They'll be able to utilize it uh, with the arrow and the Dragon Knight stun and really put some burnout. Looks like they're going to push this tower instead though. But Dyne's got his uh, Shadow Blade up, but both teams, you gotta, they both want to be very careful. They know that this game could turn around on one team wipe. Both of their respawn times are so high right now that they really need to be very careful. Buyback status, uh, no one's really got it right now. Everybody's been buying items, so a team wipe could be devastating. Only one buyback on each team. Those are some tanky illusions. Desperately want to take a drink of my water, but I can't move my hands off of this camera because the action's been so hot and heavy. Oh, they found Lion in the tree. Lions is in trouble. Will they initiate where they let that lion go? Lion's gonna have. They're gonna have to let him go. They let the lion drop. An easy kill by PF is gonna put them on the front foot to take this tower down. And Luce is going to be forced to go back, stop those creeps that we talked about. Mega creeps in their house, and uh, this tower is just going to be easy to take down. They don't even have creeps with them. They're just trying to—they're trying to overwhelm it. But uh, here come the creeps, so now they'll be able to burn it down. Guess what's happening? The Dyer's bottom top. The Dyer gave up a bottom tower. And it's up. Somebody's on a roll. How about that? Go on the roll. That's four on the roll. Two down. Not the strongest enemy I've grappled with. You the artist's life. Two down. Two down. Incoming! 
Dyer's top racks is in trouble. Still. Alright, I just realized that my mic was flipped up for, I hope, not too long, uh, but we are back. So, uh, we were just talking about the items. This has been a very back and forth match. Uh, MKB and BKB out on that Marana. Uh, and two Heaven's Halberds that will most likely be used on the Slark, as well as a Pipe of Insight showing up on the side of Power Falcons. This is about to get very, very bloodbathy. Marana looks like she's going to be able to possibly go get the double damage rune. She arrows just to be safe. Nope, not going to go for it. They must not see that it is there. Not a lot of wards out right now. Uh, they've been very aggressively de-warding each other. It looks like they're going to push up their lanes, get back into that position to take another team fight. Uh, we see a team fight go the way of PF, and that is most likely a GG. We do have the Aegis over on the side of Lucid. They're probably going to need at least two team wipes, I would say, to get themselves back in a postured position. But it is not not doable. Uh, this is, I've seen bigger comebacks. They're very evenly matched right now as far as the kills go. Gold is very, very close. XP is actually the way of Lucid. So if we look at those hero levels, Lucid is getting the best of the hero leveling at this point for their carries. That gyrocopter just has a ton of money. Uh, oh no, Clockwork picks up a BKB. So brand new BKB on the Clockwork. That does make th three BKBs if I don't... Yep, three BKBs on the side of Lucid. Sorry about that mic situation, I uh, lifted it up to get a drink of much needed water and I uh, forgot to put it back down. So my sincerest apologies gentlemen, it looks like we lost about 45 seconds or so of the audio. On the upside I get to hear compliments from the Twitch stream saying, oh why'd the mic go out, we really like his commentary, that makes me feel special. All right, here it comes. There's a smoke up, so the smoke is in. This is the team fight we've been waiting for. The arrow misses. There's the BKBs. There's the engagement. Oh Lord, sweet Jesus! It's a bloodbath. Call down. Bane's the first to go. Nix is next. Downs the gyrocopter. Nix is up close, but he seems to be getting away. Marana, Marana, Marana. Marana does drop. Down goes the Nix. Lion could be next. And they are still chasing. They're still aggressively chasing here. We lost the Timber Saw. We lost the Marana. We lost that Bane. This Venomancer could be in some deep trouble. Nice jump. And they get the Venomancer. Uh, <laughs> Clockwork better pour it out. That poison's going to get him if he doesn't. Off he goes. Uh, Gyrocopter staying to take the fight. And we end up with a 4 for 2. Great job by Lucid to get that team wipe on PF. So now the question is, what will they do? Uh, keeping in mind, obviously, the Gyrocopter did lose that Aegis. What are they going to do to turn that wipe around to get this back and get themselves back in the game? 
at this point it's not just going to be about farm at this point they've got to kind of get a strategy here together uh, max levels are getting very close gear is getting to the point where their slots are already filled up and there's not going to be a lot of new gear coming out that is, and for those of you who did not see it, a Divine Rapier on the Gyrocopter, who is very deep in enemy territory. Yes, supporting out is probably a very good choice right now. So, Desperation does lead Lucid to a desperate moment, and they pick up the Divine Rapier on the Gyrocopter, who is now level 25 with a Butterfly, a BKB, and a Helm of the Dominator. He's also sitting about 2400 gold, so he'll probably pick up another survivability item, especially if he's sitting on top of that uh, Divine Rapier there. Now, if he does go down and that Divine Rapier falls into the hands of someone like that Dragon Knight uh, or that Marana, there could be hell to pay. Marana sitting on the BKB and the MKB with a Divine Rapier is going to be able to put out so much attack speed. Right now, her attacks are coming in at uh, a little over one per second, so she'd be able to put a lot of damage with that thing. change to hero levels so you can keep an eye on the tracking Gy gyrocopter obviously in the lead right now but he's got no more no more levels to go so this is this is it we've hit the cap we've hit terminal velocity what a long hook shot uh oh clockwork could be in some trouble there's the there's the four staff by bane he gets the nightmare up but the team comes in the cavalry does save him good job by slark he uses his uh uses his dark pact and then takes the nightmare off so very smart smart play by slark to kind of counter that bane Power Falcons falls back. They are scared of this Gyrocopter. Gyrocopter is in a situation where his BKB, if I remember correctly, it's down to the four second duration. Uh, so he actually might buy a new BKB. I wouldn't be surprised to see something like that. Uh, if he can get himself back up to that eight, 10 second duration, that could be a very, very easy win for them on the next team fight. He spent his money. What did he spend it on? I didn't see. Looks like a Reaver. <laughs> oh my goodness. That is a lot of health. Players here. Problem, problem is that every time Lucid turns around though and starts to get a push together, those creeps just keep pushing on in. Mega creeps, man. Mega creeps are the worst. So it looks like both teams are going to try to fill out a little more farm before they go in. I think I... St wait, I just saw a hex stick on somebody. Show me that hex stick. Where is it? There it is. It is on the Nyx. So that Nyx is planning on hexing the Dragon Knight, if I don't miss my guess, uh, for a quick burn down. So actually, i got to be honest, that is surprising to me. That's the first Scythe we've seen in this game. Uh, I think Scythe is going to be a very strong piece here for them. Uh, probably much more than that Heaven's Halberd is going to be. On the other side, Timbersaw also grabs his. So they both had the same idea. There will be a Hex going out on the Gyro, and there will be a Hex going out on the Timber. I'm sorry, on the Dragon Knight, and and uh, both are going to try to get those kills as fast as they can. Now, obviously, we're going to keep an eye on the Gyrocopter when we get into these big team fights because if he goes down and drops that Divine Rapier, uh, there's going to be some serious trouble. Both teams not really sure what to do. Both teams scared of the other right now. Both teams so fat. So, so fat. While they're posturing up, uh, guys, keep in mind that AD2L does run Tuesday and Thursday nights. It is open registration for the amateur scene. Uh, it's a single or it's a best of two league. Uh, registration will be opening up again soon, I think, for the next season. Uh, but we are here every Tuesday and Thursday night. Other tournaments that are great for you who are amateurs trying to get into the scene, League of Dota runs every Saturday afternoon. Uh, it does a $100 cash prize and is a single day slugfest. Also Tuesday nights is the TECS series uh, that is also a $100 cash prize. So very excited. Uh, and for those of you who are on the semi-pro interested in moving up in the world, SIVO uh, just announced that they will be doing a $5,000 tournament uh, for semi-professionals and amateurs to kind of kind of if you follow Starladder a very similar format So uh, if you haven't already checked that out, I recommend you check it out. I saw it on reddit today I think it's gonna be a really great tournament uh, It probably won't conflict with this AD2L which I'm excited about because it means I get to watch both But if you're ready to make the move from amateur to semi-pro and get paid for it uh, the new SIVO tournament sounds like it might be a place to do that 
and Dyer does get that Roche again. So they were kind of posturing, waiting for the Roche to come up. I'm surprised that PF didn't think about it and keep track. They clearly don't have a timer running on their side of the map. Um, and that is, I imagine, going to, yup, the gyrocopter. So now we have a gyrocopter with a satanic. And a BKB, and a butterfly, and a divine rapier, and an Aegis. That gyrocopter it may be one of the scariest gyrocopters I've ever seen. Ever. Uh, Marana picks up a talisman of evasion and a little late for a shadow blade. See where she's going with that. We do have a satanic, uh, like I said, up on the gyrocopter. Ag's still up on that clockwork. Nobody's had to sell off anything yet, so uh, everybody is sitting. On, I will say this: is everybody is sitting on a t on a TP over on the side of PF, so they are prepared to get back and defend if necessity dictates it. Uh, we only have three TPs due to spacing on Lucid. So if Lucid gets caught in on a push and gets wiped somewhere in this area here. It could be very easy uh, for PF to make a hard push without Lucid able to counter that. The dangers of too much gear, I suppose. Oh, they gave Slark that cheese. So cheese, almost as good as an Aegis, uh, essentially means that you've got to fight somebody twice. I just to verify my sound is back. Uh, should be Everything should be good and up on the stream. So those of you watching on Dota TV, thank you for joining us. Uh, this has been one hell of a match. Hopefully you are enjoying it as much as I am. Uh, to those joining us on twitch.tv slash 5 Gaming, thank you for being here. If you like the cast, please, please, please hit that subscribe button. Uh, let Twitch TV know that you like us and that we deserve to get featured uh, or partnered so that one day we can offer you things like quality controls uh, as well as the ability to maybe run some commercials between matches so we can put a little extra cash in Toffee's pocket. Also, I'm uh, getting a little desperate to upgrade this GPU of mine, so uh, if we can if we can get some income on the stream, that would be wonderful, because my GPU uh, doesn't have too much longer before it burns out. Poor guys, working overtime with all the streaming and casting. Could this be it? Could this be it? We've been dancing around each other, dancing, we've been waltzing, the game's getting very slow, there's some wards, looks like we're working on some vision. PF just really worried to take the fight in because they know that that Aegis is out there. On the other hand, Lucid can't leave their base. They just can't get far enough ahead on those creeps. And if they split up to kind of push the creep waves back at the same time, you know Power Falcons is going to pounce on them. I will say this. 55 minutes into the game, it surprises me that we haven't seen more boots of travel out on these players. Uh, we're still sticking to losing a slot to a teleport scroll when we could be pushing the boots of travel. And that, that to me is a little bit of a travesty. Old almost dead even, XP still going with Lucid. Uh, let's see, hero level uh, still, uh oh, nope, nothing there. It was some next level farming with that hookshot. All right, guys. Sell no boots to travel. I'm not really sure. It looks like they're still... PF is still farming for something. I'm not sure what they're farming for. I don't know if they're trying to uh, get hands on some buybacks before they decide to go with an engagement here. I, I really am not positive. I'm honestly on 4,000 gold at the moment. What is she going to do? Obviously the butterfly for her, uh... Interesting. BKB, yep, so Gyrocopter re-ups the BKB. I thought he might. Uh, he's going to pick up a brand new duration on that bad boy, and that is going to give them a lot of flexibility on this early push. So, uh, predicted right, I think it was a good choice for the Gyro, especially with that Divine Rapier in hand. Uh, but he has the Satanic, he has the BKB, he's going to be able to just kind of take on the team by himself shortly. 
Though the longer they take, the more that timber saw. That timber saw is gaining in levels. That dragon knight was 20 when the posturing started. Now he's 22. So uh, I think what's happening here is PR says, well, if you guys want to need are going to stay in your base, that's fine. We're going to farm ourselves up to 25, and we're going to come aggressive. So that looks like what they might be doing here. Uh, they got 54 seconds left on the Aegis. So they need to figure out something to do with that ASAP. And they don't have any vision. The problem is they have no vision down here uh, anywhere in the jungle. So they don't know where Power Falcons is. They can't leave the base without their friends uh, because all it takes is a jump to get them to a 4v5. Oh, there's the smoke. There's the smoke we've been waiting for. This could be it. Please, God, let this be it. Uh, for those of you watching on Twitch.tv, Thursday night, I, uh, right now, Toffee's at underscore, at Toffee's underscore Dota 2. Please put me on follow. I will be headlining the TE, the Thursday Evening Cup series for NA Dota uh, on Thursday night. We start around 8 o'clock, so it should be a really good single elimination tournament that ends in a $100 cash prize. So join me for that on Thursday night on the stream twitch.tv slash NEO Dota. Um, I will obviously tweet those details out right before the matchups. So the smoke didn't pan out, they did get discovered, and they're going to have to fall on back to what they were doing previously. Those mega creeps really paying off for PF. And the Aegis is reclaimed. So, uh, pretty big, there, that would be what PF was waiting for, Aegis goes back down. Looks like Roche will be about two more minutes. Uh, this is the time. Power Falcons has the chance to make their move. Uh-oh. Gyro is a little bit out. They're going to get the stun on him with the Dragonite. Dragonite wants to move in. He gets his stun. He does pop his ulti. The BKB goes off. Is he going to be able to get it off? He is not. He's going to go down. Gyrocopter barely gets it off. The heals, the heals, the satanic. He's keeping himself up, but just barely. And down it goes. The Divine Rapier hits the deck. Who gets it? I can't even tell anymore. Timber saw hitting the great job with that hex stick clockwork dragon knight dragon knight uh, does not grab that divine rapier who is the one who got it if Bane picks it up we have a Bane with a divine rapier in what world in what world it is a four to two four to three a great pick off by the clockwork there and clockwork's gonna make an escape so it's four to three but the divine rapier hits the deck and now those creeps are just, look at that wave, just pouring in. That tower is going to get melted down. Uh, do we have buybacks on the side? Uh, we do have buybacks. Lucid's going to have to use them. Nope, I'm sorry. Lucid does not have very many at all. So this is it. They're going to be on top of that Ancient in just a second. We do get the buyback from Clockwork. He's the only one who can. But will it be enough? I don't think it will be. Radiance bottom tower. Might be over Timber saw in there mixing it up, but he is the yeah, only one. But those here. creeps are just so many of them. Uh, they're gonna start putting the hurt on that ancient real quick. It's sundown for the Dyer's ancient. Oh my goodness! I don't know why Timber saw is leaving. <laughs> we got a great opportunity there. The Dyer's ancient. And Bane trouble. just uh, farming, uh, farming yet. away with his divine rapier. You know, no big deal. Just an average day for Bane. The Dyer's Ancient ain't gonna last. For those of you watching Twitch, I will say this. I am in Ancient Boston, and apparently there's a snowstorm or something outside, so perhaps that does account for the uh, signal not being as strong as it normally is. It's pretty rare that I see lag on my stream. Uh, perhaps that is the culprit since it was gone for so long and now it's back. Looks like they're watching. They know that Roche is coming up soon. Uh, it's another minute and a half, though, based on that timer. So uh, if that's what PF is going to wait for, uh, I don't know if that's the best choice. But Lucid back on defense. It is golden advantage of PF, XP in the advantage of Lucid, but barely. Uh, and, and so much farm out there right now. We got one last team fight, and then we're going to see a GG. There's no way around that. So Basher picked up by Slark. Looks like that's going to become an Abyssal Blade very soon. Chose not to go with the Sangs, which I think is an interesting choice there.
Butterfly picked up by Marana. What else do we see? A BKB picked up. Uh, that's the Gyrocopter. Ah, so another BKB picked up by Gyrocopter. Very interesting. I'm a little bit confused by that. So I guess he's going to try to pop them back to back. Is that a fair assessment? I just threw his old, D, uh, his old DKB that looks in the, like, in the stash to get the new one out. Alright, so we got the high ground for PF. Looks like the team fight could be coming. Uh, maybe pinging a little bit of rotation here. Oh, Roche is up. So this would be a good chance for PF to go in and try to get that Roche real quick. The Lucid honestly can't come out of the base. These creeps are about to push in on this side as well. These as well. These, these <laughs> creep waves are just enormous. So they're going to go in and get themselves a nice fast Roche, and then we'll see them enter the base. Regeneration! Might be over for the Dyer's Ancient. Got that Wardle D. They're gonna D Ward Lucid. Uh, they get the Roche. Slark tries to jump in and steal it, unable to do so. Might find himself in a tough position. Pops his ulti and he's gonna haul out of there. And then pounces just in time again. Oh, he's caught in a nightmare. Uh-oh. This could be it. This could be it for the Slark. Slark's in trouble. And boom, down he goes. That is a dead Slark, and that is gonna put Lucid in a very bad position. But you know they had to try for that steal, they really had to. So here they come. We'll flip over that buyback chart again. Slark does not have a buyback. Uh-oh. Here they go. They're going to take the fight. BKBs are popped. Down goes the Gyrocopter. Down goes the Nyx. Clockwork goes down. Buyback from the Gyro. There's the call down. Will it be enough? I don't think it will. Pops his BKB. And down he goes. GG. What a win for Power Falcon. So they come back and they take the second off and good lord, a 64 minute win for Radiant. Well done, Power Falcons. I thought you were in trouble. You came back. It was a back and forth. What a wonderful game. I loved it. Uh, those of you watching on Dodo TV, I hope you found some sweet loot because there was a lot of multi-kills. Those of you watching on Midas, uh, 5 Midas, I appreciate you watching. Please hit that subscribe button if you like the stream. It helps us out uh, more than I can possibly describe to you. That said, please follow me at Toffees underscore Dota 2 so I can broadcast and let you know when upcoming matches are going to be. But thank you for joining us for this AD2L match uh, that should have been the match of the night because it was freaking phenomenal.